What's up y'all? Roscoe again with Moonlit Fly Fishing. Uh, look, there's a mayfly hatch on my flies. Just kidding. Uh, so today we're going to tie a pretty fun fly. A little backstory on this bug was a couple years ago I got my first trip to the Green River. And I went out there and I had tied this big ugly monstrosity of a hare's ear nymph that had a big brown wing case on it. And spent the bulk of the day getting my butt handed to me by that river <clears throat> and towards the end of the day I needed something to get me out into the river far enough past the heavy winds that had come up and so I found this big hare's ear monstrosity uh, and today's fly is a basically a version of that it's just a flashback hare's ear nymph with some rubber legs but I've tied it uh, kind of big so I can use it as a point fly with a euro nymph rig uh, anyway so threw that bug on there finally and was able to cast out far enough into the river and although it didn't result in a fish it resulted in the most violent hookup of the trip and ensured me that I needed to put more of these bugs in my boxes so here we go uh, first thing we're gonna do is a size 8 uh, hook from Moonlit it's the ML051 it's the competition nymph hook this is the like the circle grub hook kind of deal and on top of that, I've got a 4.6 millimeter tungsten bead from Moonlit as well. <clears throat> uh, first thing we're going to want to do, that's true. I've got also a uh, Semperfly waxed thread, their new stuff, and this is the 12 aught, and the color is Rust. This is the first time I've tried this, so I'm kind of excited to give this a, give this a shot. Uh, first thing we're going to do, dress the hook. Don't worry about seating the bead or anything like that. And if you notice, uh, I chuck this hook up in my vise so that that bead kind of hangs towards the front of the hook a little bit so that it kind of dangles. That'll keep the bead where you want it. Uh, just trim off that waist. Okay, so the first thing we're going to tie on the fly is a tail. Uh, on most hare's ear bugs you can use uh, just the hare's mask fibers itself, but I like to use Coq de Leon for my tailing. It's way strong, it, uh, super durable on the bug. And I grab a pretty decent bunch of it for this bug. You know, somewhere in the neighborhood of that. Pull them to the side and just rip them right off the stem. Okay, so measure your uh, tail length. I like to go about the full shank length here. We'll go there, take a pinch, and seat that tail. Give it a couple of wraps and check your length. Give it, make sure it's good and tight. Wrap one let underneath it just to kind of prop that tail up. And then go ahead and take that back to the tie-in point of your start of your fly. Just tie all that cock de Leon down. It doesn't matter if it twists. You're going to put a ton of dubbing on here. And I just let it go. Just run all that down. Preen that back a little bit. Okay, then we're going to tie in a wire for a rib. The wire that we're using today is it's the uh, brush size uh, ultra wire in wine color. So tie that guy in right here on top and work that back down to the tail. Put that in your material clip if you've got it. If this kind of stuff bugs you, you can trim it off and get it out of the way. Otherwise you're going to put a big dubbed hair's ear body on that so it really doesn't matter. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is your flashback. And that we're going to use a Mirage tinsel, medium size in opal color. This is one of my favorite tinsels to use for flashbacks and all sorts of things. It's the right kind of shiny stuff that I think fish like to eat. So we'll tie that guy in here right at the top of the tail. Try to keep it on top of the hook shank with some soft wrap there and then you can take it and stick it in your material clip. I like to run this Mirage tinsel all the way up the shank of the hook. It's real slippery and I like to make sure it's tied in well. Go all the way up to the bead and then come back a few turns, fold that over and lock it down. Once you've got that locked down, you know I'm not even going to trim it. I'll just bury that all the way. Okay, next step is your hair's ear body. You could do this uh, with a dubbing loop, you could do it with a, just a touch dubbing method. That's what I'm going to do today. <clears throat> just a simple touch dub. I guess I probably shouldn't even put any wax on here since this is new wax thread. Okay, the dubbing I'm going to use is a little custom blend. The golden stone variation. It's a hare's mask, hare's foot, a little bit of snowshoe rabbit, tiny bit of ice dub, you know, dog hair, belly button lint, whatever. 
just a whole bunch of goodness that is really just the right colors. So I'm going to give that a pretty healthy bunch of dubbing for this body because this fly is kind of bulky. Another little pinch of that. You're going to want to make sure you put a lot of dubbing on here because I do like it to give a big solid taper and I like to be able to brush it out when I'm done and lose a bit half of the density of the fibers. So, Okay, once you've got that dubbed onto your thread, just proceed in bringing that up. Kind of want to try and keep it tapered so I get a little bit less, a little bit more if it starts to get undone. Tighten that up. Go again. Make sure you're covering up everything underneath and go all the way up to the bead. So you got a little bit of a taper going on there. Now bring that flashback tinsel up over the top of the, the body of that fly and pin it down. A couple of wraps of thread there in front, a couple behind it. And then I'll take that back about two or three wraps and that's going to be where I'm going to start my thorax for this fly. Trim that guy off. Okay, since I dubbed that towards or away from me, I'm going to counter rib this wire towards me. Bring that towards you. Just kind of keep those wraps evenly separated as you can and just take your time. It's not a big hurry. And run that all the way back up to the bead. And I just go ahead and do that because I can cover all that up with that thorax section. A few wraps in front, a few wraps behind the wire. And then I take the flush clip pliers and trim that guy off. Okay, so now the next step we're going to do is a wing case. And I like to use thin, thin skin for my wing cases because it comes in tons of different colors and it comes in lots of different patterns. And it's kind of just a fun, easy, durable thing to put on a fly. The version of that I'm going to use this time is the, uh, uh, I think it's called tan with black specks or something. I uh, like to cut a tiny little triangle for a tie-in on this material. You know, something like that doesn't have to be too crazy. And I'll use my bodkin to separate this. Sometimes it's a little bit of a bugger. Once I've got that separated, I'm going to take that with the, uh, the outside facing down. I'm going to peg that right on top of that flashback tinsel. And just a couple of loose wraps to set it there. Okay, now bring that back to where your thorax is going to end. Or start, I should say, not end. Okay, now that you've got the thread backed up to the start of your thorax, uh, we're going to put some dubbing on the thread. We're going to use the uh, Remix dubbing in Golden Olive. <clears throat> just a little pinch of that. I do like the qualities of this thread to hold dubbing. It's kind of nice. Okay, take that dubbing and set that in right at the thorax beginning and stay kind of in the same place. Build up a little bit of a lump and then work to the front of that lump and hold your thread at that point. Okay, now we're going to tie in some rubber legs. The uh, rubber legs that I'm using are the Centipede Legs by MFC and they're in size small and it's the uh, yellow and black. This guy right here. Take the, uh, you only need one leg. Take the first leg and set it to the, the hook shank side on your side. Tie it in with one or two wraps here. Then make sure it's seated the right. Loop that rubber leg around the front of that bead and do a nice soft loop and pull it tight. When it gets seated on the side of the hook, you can give it a couple more tight wraps. And there you go. Uh, to keep these things separated from each other so they don't get tangled up while you're fishing the bug, just continue with that same golden olive dubbing, little ball of it to separate the legs, and then you're going to put a little ball in front of the legs to just keep them splayed off from the bead. Pin those guys back. Continue to build that thorax up. You kind of want it to be a big ball right there so you have something to stretch the uh, thin skin over. Uh, you can separate those legs now and trim them to length at the end of the fly but it keeps them out of your way. A little bit more dubbing.
and then pull those front legs back like that a couple of wraps there see how it kind of props those guys up and then you're going to want to pull that thin skin over the top you can have the dubbing here because it helps you to not cut the thin skin with your string and you got that cool little back two or three wraps pull the thin skin back a couple of wraps in front of it see how that all slides in there between the bead and just keep going until all that dubbing's in and then trim off that thin skin now I like to just go a couple of bit or a couple more wraps of some dubbing just to help pin that tag end of the thin skin wrap under the bead dub your thread pull those legs out of the way and then wrap right over the top of that thin skin Looks like one of those legs is splaying back a little bit, so I'm going to bring a little bit more dubbing in there and straighten that guy out. There we go. And then just finish this up with the whip finish here at the tip. And there you go. Uh, to trim the legs, I usually just turn it upside down, pull them all to the same length so that they're all together. Pick the shortest one and chop them. And there you go. It's a hare's ear nymph, but with a flashback. And this is a pretty active bug in my box. It's a good point fly, gets down deep, and fish eat it. So thanks for watching, guys.